fringe gentian flowers once and then it dies. It's a biennial. The first year, it's a little tiny basil rosette of leaves on the ground. I don't think I could even find one here. And the second year, it blooms with these gorgeous blue purple blooms, goes to seed, and then that's it. We're here at White Lake. White Lake is a limestone sinkhole pond in karst geology. And this thing here that looks like a castle is the old marl works. Marl is a kind of soil that's very high in calcium carbonate minerals, silts and clays. It was used in the manufacture of cement and also as a soil conditioner for agriculture to elevate the pH of fields. Fringe gentian is a plant that's rare or declining through much of its range and it's dependent on high calcium soils like those found in the marls here at White Lake. Fringe gentian needs special conditions to thrive in. It needs a moist soil that's high in calcium, high pH, and it needs open conditions, not under the shade of dense shrubs or trees. A lot of biennials are weedy plants. They're prolific seed producers. They show up where the earth has been disturbed. Fringe gentian has a different strategy, a difficult strategy. Fringe gentian, all of its seeds germinate within a year or two and either succeed or fail. So it can't remain hidden in the soil for decades waiting for just the right conditions to happen. It needs to live in a habitat where the conditions under which it thrives are persistent and it can seed in year after year and consistently bloom in the same place over long arcs of time. This is a carnivorous plant, pitcher plant. It's something we normally see growing in an acidic bog. There's something adverse enough about the soil conditions here that pitcher plant is thriving. The soils here might be so high in pH, so high in calcium, that they're actually toxic to more common plant species. This is New England aster here. If you know this plant, you know that it's usually blooming at this time of year, probably chest high on me. This is bone set over here, which would be at least waist height. Look how small these plants are here. There's something special about the soil conditions here that are keeping normally large, aggressive plant species much, much smaller. And if you think about fringe gentian and what a small plant it is and how tiny those first year basal rosettes are, you can see why it might need conditions like this where competition is kept down by something in the soil allowing fringe gentian to not be completely swamped and shaded out. Fringe gentian must have loved it after the last glacial retreat. All of those exposed mineral soils, the meltwater and seepage, and no trees, no forests. Even after that, it managed to persist in the Northeast in a highly forested area, relying on riverbanks and beaver meadows, prairie and remnants, and open lands that were tended by indigenous people. This is a plant that's becoming more and more rare across its range in the landscape. It exists in small populations that are infrequently distributed across a wide area. So what makes White Lake so special? Clearly there's something going on in the soils here. High calcium levels, high pH, but we're also in a new kind of a cultural landscape here landscape that's stewarded by conservation organizations who mow the meadows here, who remove invasive species, so that the open conditions that special plants like fringe gentian require can persist in this place. And fringe gentian can be here for the long term.